Let's give them something to talk about. See the energy running out. I got the brand new run around. Okay, okay. You ain't doing nothing but bring them out. No, be humble now. You doubted me. Nothing to talk about. just me and uh i've got a couple people coming in jamie these gonna make it in uh, barbell spins there oh right on hey look at this since barbell spins here there's my barbell spin banner right on boz is coming at 10 30 by the way in case you wanted to not listen to me and tim dimmel for 30 minutes um he's coming in at 10 30 he's going to be here from 10 30 to 11 I'm going to let him do most of the talking so that way you guys get information that you want to get from him. And, um, and it should be a good conversation. I, this, this, uh, I can tell you about some of the stuff. Well, some of the stuff that I wanted to talk to him about are what his considerations are with respect to uh, affiliate layouts because you had a diversity of affiliates around the world and can only, that can only accommodate so many things with an increasing number of participants, 25% of Diablo, for example. And it's, you know, it, it, yes, do we have, we've been around a long time. We have uh, athletes that are certainly competitive, but, um, you know, just being around a long time, uh, almost guarantee that we were going to have quite a few people make it to quarter, quarterfinals. Oh, Sarah, sorry, Sarah. Um, <laughs> the figures. I tried to, I, I put it in the notes somewhere in that pose that he could, I tried to get him on a 10. He couldn't do 10. He could only do 10, 30 to 11 in our regular podcast times 10. So here we are. But anyway, the stuff that I wanted to talk to him about, if you guys got stuff you want to talk to him about, throw it in the comments um, because he's announcing uh, the team semifinals today. And then next week will be the, or two weeks from now will be individual and, and age group athletes. Um, but the, but I wanted to, one of the things I wanted to talk to him about is uh, the you know considerations for affiliates in in terms of logistics because you have a larger number of athletes. Diablo has now 50, we have fifty nine athletes that qualified for quarterfinals, and um, and and then we have probably I'm probably going to have about forty five that'll do it officially. We are requiring people to in if you want to do the quarterfinals here at Diablo, you have to. Um, register for the for the quarterfinals. We don't want because just because of the sheer number of people that are doing it. I uh, just want to make sure that people are doing it. The people that actually are serious about it are going to get preference. But you, but if again, it, some of the considerations we have for quarterfinals are the same considerations we have for the open. Do we have enough floor space? Do we have enough um, uh, pull-up bars? Do we have enough rings? Do we have all of the things that people may need during that process? Um, and and so what I want to understand is, you know, how much of that is influencing the quarterfinals workouts this year because of the much larger number of people that qualified for quarterfinals. Um, you know, I've, I've had to, some conversations with affiliate owners. I had one last night. Uh, they were commenting on the number of people that qualified um, and who they were and who the athletes were and what quarterfinals would be like for them. Um, we, I'm a fan of the 25%. The enthusiasm and excitement of my gym is, is, has been, has reached a little, I just want to say it's reached deeper. And, you know, I, I see, we, I was talking about it this morning. There's, I saw an athlete uh, in yesterday, when I walked in yesterday, that's, that's going to, she's going to be doing age group quarterfinals and she's doing a private coaching session with a, with one of our coaches, you know, to try and improve her skills, getting ready for quarterfinals. And I see more and more of that where my coaches are now getting, you know, private coaching sessions as a result of, uh, their desire to want to be able to perform well uh, during court photos, or at least just not get stuck somewhere. Um, and that's the other thing I want to talk to Boz about too, is getting stuck somewhere. If you guys remember the quarterfinal workouts last year, uh, 24 point, uh, um, if you remember 24 point, uh, let me see, 23.4, I want to say in the quarterfinals. It was, it was the fourth workout, fourth or fifth workout. You know, it was box jump overs and a clean and jerk. And it was a high box jump, no big deal. But each round, it it went up in number of reps on the clean and jerk. And the clean and jerk weight started at 275 for the men, and it was 185 for the, for the women. And that was um, kind of... Uh, um, 
discouraging for some athletes. It was literally a punch in the face. But we had less athletes doing quarterfinals because it was the ten percent. And, and so the ones that made it were certainly more qualified, but we still had some people that were just, just completely dead stopped. And it's a little bit of a buzzkill, but I think it's absolutely necessary at this stage of the competition. Like we were going to send you know, 30 or 40 athletes to a destination where a large investment is being made. Judges are being flown in, you know, accommodations being made, equipment's there. Like it's the some, each of the semifinals events is, you know, I don't want to say a minimum. I um, think a minimum five hundred thousand dollars to to host that event, and so they want to make sure that the best athletes are there. And obviously, we're working towards getting the fittest men and women in the world to to uh, the fittest athletes in the world to the games. So it's um, uh, hold on one second, Jamie. He's trying to plug in. Are you in? I am. Okay, cool. But you have my dongle thing, and I have no way to hook up camera. <laughs> um, so I'll just go with my this guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Sorry for being late, guys. Yeah, we, we do. I, I do have a home. There's not an extra one somewhere. I, I there was one, but it doesn't have the uh, USB C on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's frustrating. Let me get, I'm going to order a couple Apple. more of those. Yeah, the whole transition from USB B to USB C is just pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Anyway, um, so Jamie's here. Your cat, your camera's actually not that bad. Yeah, it's not too bad, right? No, no, it's a shit. I'll bring, I'll bring it up to a decent height. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's freaking Apple, man. They're awesome. Well, Tim Tim's late too. But anyway, oh, so it's coming on too. Yeah, awesome. No, we have a pretty good crowd out here already, and it's kind of like I feel like it's false advertising. It's clickbait, you know, because I got Boz. <laughs> Boz is coming. He's just not coming till ten thirty. Well, that's what kind of threw me and, off. And I did write it in the notes. <laughs> Sorry, he was coming ten thirty. Um, but anyway, it's kind of pre previewing some of the questions and some of the thoughts. Anyway, so cool. so I think the I think the individual athlete test, um, which is piggybacks with with the age group test, which makes me nervous as an age group because I qualified in my my very small pool of athletes in the two in the 60, 60 to sixty four. There was something like there's twenty seven hundred athletes that are I think it's thirty seven thirty seven hundred athletes that signed up in the sixty to sixty four age group. And but only like twenty seven hundred actually, actually did the workouts. Did all three workouts. That's a big drop. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, come on, these shit. You wake up and your back hurts, man. It's like yeah. it's, that's a that's a everyday possibility for someone sixty to sixty four. Yeah. Um, but in my age group, uh, it's smaller. It's uh, but so but it makes me worried for the age groupers, like mm -hmm. because the workouts are the same. Um, same as this good boss. All right, look, I said <laughs> Boz was coming on at 10.30. So, so don't be bummed out. You can listen to, to Jamie Lee. Yeah, watch out. That chair kind of flips back. Too. Jesus. Um, and then, the, so we, I do have a third person dialing in because we weren't even sure if Jamie was going to be here because he was on a camping trip. Yeah, last minute decided to come home like yeah. freaking 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And so then, so Tim, Tim, Tim's joining us. We'll see if he got his technology. Ready. He does have headphones. Well, on. you're kind of echoey. Yeah, I got headphones. Head. I got a wonderful zero, mic. Zero audio. You have zero. You can't hear you. You can't, can't hear me. You. Your mic is not working. Um. So, the he, he's not muted. I muted myself. I think I might have. I'm not no, muted. Okay. Hello, hello. Um. Yeah, the three musketeers. It told me. It told me that mine was good. This is not a professional show at this point. The hobby audio. My microphone is showing that I it's. Can hear you, Tim. It's saying it's coming at in. At least when I came on, Tim. I just Tim, on. Tim, go to settings. <laughs> it is go to settings and check mic, and then stop muting yourself. Oh, you can hear him. They said. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's on my. Oh, end. you got to use a mixer. Oh, use a PC one. one. The, the, yeah, that one. All right. Oh, they can hear you. Okay, talk now, Tim. I'm talking. I'm talking. Give me the other one. How are we doing? How are we doing? I got them all up, dude. You got me. You got me lined up. Can you hear this? This is what. This is the all most up. important part. Have the, uh, head, the, hold on. Sorry, guys. Yeah, drink your monster. Anyway, so so those are the things that, that I wanted to talk to him about. And then I wanted to I wanted to get uh, Boz's recommendations for to affiliate owners um for quarterfinals. Where does this go? A 
about that? Hey, Tim, talk again. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? me now? Yeah, I got you. Sorry about that. Oh, I know. Can See if you can hear him. Can you hear him? Can you hear me? Say something. I hear you yeah, guys. I just hear him on my left side. The It left says side. everyone can see and hear you. As long as they can hear you. Yeah, that's well, what the... <laughs> Yeah, that's what it says. Well, let's see. Hopefully, well, you know what? This is good actually because I would rather that be we work this out before Boston. Yeah, the, no, I'd rather we fuck it up with Tim and we don't care about than than if we do it with um then we do it with uh, Boz. I want to make sure it works really well with Boz. Um, good question. I want to see if the team workouts will be, will be a good predictor. What? Well, I know, and and I, you know, I almost don't want to put. Um, um, I don't want. I kind of, kind of don't want to put Boz on the spot. Like you know, you, you, you guys. Know. What's the workouts going to be? Well, no, because it's like, like, you, you, I think about the future too. Like, I want, yeah. I want to have Boz on again. Yeah. But if I, you know, put undue pressure on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's going to crack under the pressure. It's like he's never experienced, you know, any kind of uh, CrossFit well, community yeah, pressure but, before. But no, he's going to go that asshole. All he did was have me on to ask me what the workouts were. <laughs> I'm not going to go on his podcast again. Yeah. And he so then challenge that. yourself to not even talk about the workouts. Ask him about motorcycles, motorcycles yep. and tattoos, uh, the best joggers to wear in hot weather, you know. Okay. Um, at some point in time, I may have to mute Tim. <laughs> First of all, he's like, I, I, I got the that. memo. Hey, don't talk when Boz comes on because I want him to talk. We only got him for 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did send him that note. I did. Just let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's like, keep the monsters out of the picture. Yeah. Are um, they not sponsoring anymore? Oh, this is, see, this is a good question. So, so I thought about this right for so a while too. Th this is a good question, right? That's what I want to know too, right? And those are the things that I kind of want to hint towards with like affiliate setups. Like there's some affiliates that have one. There's some affiliates. Yeah. Would there's some affiliates I, which is just mind boggling. May not me. even have it. No, no. Even foot. in California, for as long as CrossFit's been around in California, <laughs> there's some gyms that don't have 15 foot ropes. Yeah, or even GCs. Imagine. It'd be almost like if they were on a storefront, you know, in like a strip mall uh, and we're, you know, I bet your buddy Derek doesn't, I bet Derek doesn't have 15 foot rope. I bet he does. Does he? Does he? Is his know. ceiling yeah, tall enough? Uh, he might. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We have He's to... got 15 foot ceilings. Tim, Tim comes <laughs> over he? to, Tim comes, I don't. Over, Tim comes over to the best CrossFit gym in the world. Drives across the bay to the best CrossFit gym in the world to do his best barbecue rope climb workouts. That's why you're always here during quarterfinals. Quarter, quarter, quarterfinal workouts. It's just for the barbecue, Jamie Lee. 50, 15 <laughs> foot rope climbs. Just for some slow hand. It's yeah. just the barbecue. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think I think you're right. That, that <laughs> this is good. This is good butter em up fest. That's so true. I know. <laughs> and <laughs> hopefully he's not somewhere listening to this pre-show before he comes on. That's why he's like, I can come on at 10 30. Your yeah. show starts at 10, right? And Boz, <laughs> by the way, I just want to compliment you. The open workouts were phenomenal. They're the go. best they were ever were. They were good. Yeah. And last year's games, outstanding. What that people say about the comparisons <laughs> to other programmers in the past, that's bullshit. <laughs> Dude, we got to give you credit for your long history in CrossFit, your gymnastics skills, your own personal fitness skills. And I'm, and, and I think, quite frankly, you're doing an amazing job. Now, tell us about what the workouts are for quarterfinals. <laughs> well, I'll tell them this too, because I, I know someone that um, was, she works in the production side of the games. And she was like, and it's, and it's not a knock. And that, that's the thing, right? It's not that it's a knock on anything about Dave. But him and David, they're different people. Yeah. And but Boz was in the trailer telling them what the point of these workouts were and how they were gonna develop and how they were gonna oh, go yeah. and where they were going and the angles and this and that and whatever. And so, like, so then the even the commentators, they knew the people that were doing the production, the filming, the directing, all that kind of stuff, and the talking heads all knew something about these workouts that they knew they weren't just making it up right? remember you it. So it's really cool yeah because it gave them perspective so that they could which helps with production right with they could tell the story they could tell the story yeah yeah that's really cool 
it's the, the guy has a term. It, I mean, he's been doing this since I don't know. We we since the beginning with CrossFit San Francisco. He's like two thousand. He may have been two thousand four yeah. or three something. I mean, like you that. think of all the the content that him and uh, Kelly did back in the day. Right. All the movement demos, the right. single leg overhead pistol squats, and yeah. Um, I mean, like oh yeah, remember the remember the, the pistol squats, and then whoa, just the unique. Well, also he had he had parallelettes back then. At that's true. At that is San Francisco. That's a good point. Yeah, he was doing a lot of um gymnastic specialty items and um you know large you know Turkish get up like big ranges of motion kind of things. You see, if, if anybody remembers this, if if anybody saw the movie Ready Player One, which by yeah. the way uh, I'm a sci-fi geek and i I love that movie it's a great movie great movie i've watched i'll watch it over and over again and my family comes in and goes you're watching that again and it replays on hbo <laughs> and i'll cut it at any point and watch it but there's a point where as he's trying to solve for the keys figure mm. out the, I, th I think it was for the first key he would go into the archives yeah and watch yeah like old replays I of, I of, what with the, this. of what the developers did <laughs> yeah right and talked about and how they thought about things and you can get you literally, if you had gone back and if you knew Boz and you knew some of the stuff that he did and you saw some of the old videos from CrossFit San Francisco, some of the, the kind of stupid human tricks that those guys did. The pirouettes. Yeah, the, the pirouettes. Yeah. He pressed a handstand. Th that stuff showed up mm -hmm. at the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. um, did you go to that? Did you? Did any of you guys go to the uh, competition that they had and we dragged? Boz and I were laughing about this at that uh affiliate gathering craig they they had something where it was like uh almost like a some sort of almost like a chain link fence type of thing and then they hooked a strap to it and we're dragging that down by the marina on the side of the road like with kettlebells on it right i mean it was just ridiculous you know but like it was super old school i mean that was oh, this would have been like 2008 yeah. you know well, back like back, back in the throwdown way. days right like yeah. it was like oh hey let's have a throwdown let's just say like hey we're gonna do a competition just show up yeah before the was it what was the last games in madison i remember the one where they did the huffle stone that was carrying the huffle stone up to the Capitol. yeah same back um, that was 20 that was, was, that was last year was oh that was 22 yeah that was 22 20 2022 but before that i had reached out to boz about six months prior or something like that and sent him a, a video of the man maker workout uh -huh. that the liver king did yeah, yeah. Had, oh yeah, yeah. The, oh, the barbarian around. yeah yeah and then uh matt souza had kind of replicated it mm -hmm. as well at his gym and did it and he just said <laughs> they just said it was all and you've done similar <laughs> stuff as well that it's just awful and i had sent it to boz and i thought man this is cool yeah just that was it you know and um what was interesting is he is something like that showed up at at the games it was really cool but it but that harkened back to his time when those guys would do that stuff i mean yeah. all, all the stuff that that he's tested himself yeah. in the past or at least you know variations of it you know i think have an influence over what he programs but there's a there's a lot that goes into programming quarterfinals and then you got to think about you know, especially with the 25 percent right only four yeah. workouts four workouts yeah yeah which makes me also think why we won't see you know, maybe a potential potentially won't see like a GHD setup because you know, I don't think so. Extra I predict no. no oh, I that's a, I, I really that's don't think we're gonna see it this year either. You're gonna yeah. well. Here's the way I look at it because I can say this now before he gets on, so I can let him talk. But uh, <laughs> if you you're too. you're you're trying to get you're getting bigger numbers, right? Like yeah. you're trying to end up with forty guys. Let's just say my age group. You're trying to end up with forty of us that can do all the things that you've programmed. Right. So and then the it's going to be two hundred or three hundred from quarterfinals go to semifinals. Whereas like last year and some of these years it's thirty, right? Like you were taking quarterfinals and going all the way down to thirty. So you could do wall facing handstand push ups last year, yeah. right? In the quarterfinal because it's like, hey, we need to make a cut, right? Yeah. Like we got to find out who can do these things. You know, Granted, that was at the and, end of the workout too. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, they can, and even and, that, and they were and they were garbage if you watch the videos on people. But yeah, besides the point, uh, the uh, but you're putting do, in those high level to, things. I do want to, by the way, I do want to talk to him about video reviews and mm. like with as many athletes as there are. So I, you know, are like, how the hell do you manage that shit? Do they have AI? 
That's all I want to know. Do they have an AI that's judging this stuff? Now? <laughs> that's a, that's not actually. I think not out of. I don't think it's that. It's, it's close. I don't think it's that far off. I mean, they might be, be using some in some capacity, right? Yeah, you get a, you know, hey, look for this squad depth. Yeah, and if it doesn't go here. Well, that's why. They, I mean, well, then again, they're not having the um the floor plans, so you don't have to be facing potentially the same direction. Yeah. So that made more sense if you, they were using AI, because then it would be a plug and play kind of setup. Yeah, All right. the, the, the inter interesting comment on the GHDs, though, and say the rope comes in, here, yeah. here's what I'm thinking. You know, CrossFit doesn't want to send anybody down to the games unprepared. I'm sorry, anybody to the semifinals unprepared. Well, for the Masters, you got another level. Of, you got yeah. another level that you can weed them out. Yeah. Through this. I mean, you get in semifinals, meaning because so, it's, it's a remote. Because it's, it's an online, it's yeah. remote. 200, 200 top yeah, 200. Yeah. But the, the other thing, too, is you got to think 25%. How many of that 20, like, the top 20%, top 15%, how um, many, how much volume you think on GHD? Like, they want them to have a good experience. And if they're going to give them, just wreck them with a bunch of GHD setups, that's that's not going to... Wreck them? Damn near killed um, them. Yeah. Well, some people, yeah, for sure. Right. So, I mean, like... Hey, that was the I best workout for me, though. Seriously. <laughs> Those GHDs, pistols, and rope climbs. I, I mean... The pencil, yeah. Oh, man. That was, that, was, that was the only reason I made it. I like that. <laughs> that and overhead work. squats. Overhead really? squats, I was like, yes. Oh, yeah. But when you add it like to that 25%, like the 10% will be able to manage that kind of volume with that movement pattern. It's a potent movement. And if the other 15% haven't exposed it enough or didn't know to expose it, it would kind of ruin their experience on the whole quarterfinals. Yes. So take it out. It, it'll be. I, you know, again, I, if they, they they're going to stagger the workouts, right? So they'll give two workouts, and then they'll give two. The, the, last year, did they announce all of the workouts? Yeah, they're going right to they're going to announce them all. It says all four on Wednesday. Yeah, and then you have then you have two due closed leaderboard, two are due on Saturday, and two are due on Monday. So you're yeah. gonna you're gonna have folks. I mean, I'm I don't plan on it. But you could easily do all of them twice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, well, if, if you're really going our, for it, if it's, our, if it's our, a big our, deal to you, our, our best athletes, absolutely, no question. Yeah, hundred percent. I would have yeah. like if I was in the shape from a couple years ago. Totally, like, dude, look how many what Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, six days to do. You know, eight workouts. What's a little rap? come on? A little abdo. <laughs> little abdo. <laughs> abdo. So true. The um, I think there'll be a my. You know, I, I think they have to have multiple scoring opportunities. Yeah, I think there's going to be. A, you know, so at like least a, to lift right an eight after an NAB <clears throat> workout. And my what, what would be really I think what would be really cool would would be to do um, have multiple workouts with multiple scoring opportunities. Yep. That would be huge. That'd be, then then so it would be get, worth maybe even repeating down well, the road just to kind of different strategize. Well, yeah, but and then, and then multiple scoring opportunities, I think, helps in, helps fix some of the issues. Tim, you're right over there. Holy yeah. So I'll push the mute button next time. <laughs> <laughs> like we need a cough button, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a mute, I got a mute button. <laughs> you know, on this nice uh, microphone that was gifted me. I got a mute. I got a mute button. That's awesome. Sounds good when you talk into it too. I'm. T do you do you need me to bring it closer? I can do that. Uh, a little bit closer. Just have to ask. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Turn it around so you're talking into it. I'm just kidding. We tried that before. Remember, it doesn't work. Wad zombies waiting. Wad zombies waiting for gas. <laughs> Um, so here, here's the, here's the other thing that I want I wanted to talk to Boz about specifically with respect to well masters, but um, with the twenty five percent with with twenty five percent you get the opportunity for more specialists to come into the field um, during the quarterfinal workout. Yeah. So if there's like a max clean and jerk is the part B, right? Yeah, you could see some score influencers coming in hitting that large lift doing not really well on everything else but having an impact on you know it's suppose that's you know, or, you know like tim said overhead squats he made it yeah. over his, well suppose you have you know some guy that's just brilliant at overhead squats sucks at everything else comes in and takes away tim's basically best opportunity bumps him down a few points 
Um, it's in, I'm it's okay with that. There you go. <laughs> one, Problem solved. One rep max. Match <laughs> into 30 ring muscles for time. That'll eliminate a lot yeah. of the specialists, right? All there. right, all right, Corey, you're you're not allowed to program for the <laughs> Watch that shows up, <laughs> right? Wow. Or even better, thirty ring muscle ups into a one or max snatch. So then that way, like, you got to be able to do the muscle ups in order to get the big number on the snatch on the wow on the lift. Yeah, don't. Yeah, this is going to be really fascinating. What's really? But I think it says snatch. it says four workouts. So it it already what? says four. What's it four workouts? Does it say four workouts or four tests? No, because it, yeah, it's just four mm. workouts. Four workouts. So you're thinking. So there could be. You're thinking workouts. workout might be two parts. Yeah, like so you're gonna end up with more yeah, two A and two B. Yeah, yeah, like a what was it? Tw- uh, eighteen. Eighteen point two or yeah. one. Or- yeah. yeah, with the 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 clean after the burpee over bar and. Um, yeah, that was a really that was a really good workout. Yeah. Uh, but like they can do that. I mean, like even that one in the um the nine minute amrap with the snatches, deadlifts, uh, total bar, and then do a clean and jerk afterwards. At a nine minutes, and then you have know, seven minutes immediately following. All right, the ascending cool. ladder of uh, snatches and uh, chest of bars was chest a bar. The that toast was a good, bar, that was a good workout. The double under toast bar with ascending cleans. Yeah. So they and then they, they changed it. They revamped it, remember, and it turned into pistols. There was pistols. Where was that one with the pistols and clean and jerks? Oh, the box jumps. It had the box jumps and the ascending clean and jerks. So you started with the box jumps for the first two rounds. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, and then the 30 uh, pistols. So it was two rounds of 30 box jumps and then 30 pistols. And the starting weight for women was 185. On that workout? Yeah, on that workout, the box jump. Oh, the box no, jumps. Oh, and it, clean and jerks, it or? ended at 315, uh, I think, 185. Oh, oh that's a different or workout. Yeah. Two, I'm thinking of a different workout. Yeah, this one was the... That was the one we hosted here. My prediction is that they that anything that they do that will be really heavy, for example, the like the workout they did last year with the two seventy five clean and jerks yeah, and the, the one box jump over, over, yeah, is that it'll be a more gradual approach into for it. For sure, for sure, right? So because you have more athletes, you don't want to just instantly freak people out. I'm going to measure it in terms of how many people I have that have committed to me at Diablo. So I have like right now 43 athletes that have committed to do the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. And we've asked them, if you're going to do the quarterfinals, you have to register. So what I'm going to measure is how many people say they're going to do it. And then how many people actually register to do it. Um, after on, the workouts at, announced. yeah after the workouts oh yeah that, i think i think a lot of our <laughs> the <laughs> folks that we have I mean, we have nine total that made yeah. it nice. but um i think they're i've talked to them i think they're just gonna wait and see mm. the um at diablo so uh, initially we you know we had i don't it's know like 200 217 oh, people total, sign up for the yeah. open and the first workout we had like 200 and 10 people do it mm-hmm. like six or seven couldn't do it or didn't or didn't wow. enter their score they did it and didn't enter their score yeah they didn't sugar walk. no and then by the third workout third workout i had because it, it changed so then they introduced double unders in the second workout no big deal but then the third workout was where people saw the scary yeah bar muscle ups and and the increasing weights and then we had um a 15 percent fall off yeah. so so and which is not bad from from um, number one to number to number three in the open workout. So that fifteen percent fall off, I, it'll be, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with quarterfinals. Quarter yeah. In our. In All our right, Craig, training. be quiet. Time for fi- time for Boz to talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, just like that, coming in hot. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Yeah. yeah well, sorry afternoon definitely. over here, but but good morning to you, gentlemen. We because we knew we only had thirty minutes with you, and so we wanted to. And Jamie Lee drove back, raced back, so he could be on it as <laughs> yeah, well. Straight oh from man. Shasta. But, yeah, right. We wanted, we wanted to get rid of all of the loose chatter that we had, all the garbage talk ahead of time, so that we could actually have a meaningful conversation with you. Wait, so you're telling me I missed the fun part? <laughs> Come on, man. they were just making fun of me, boss. Oh, yeah, brutal. It's too bad. Making He's fun jealous. of my gym. Just jealous that you got the best shirts out there, Tim. He was teasing me. That's right. That's right. Or whatever year that was, a couple years back. 2018. 2018. Yeah. The don't squat on me uh, shirt. Yep. Love that one. Um, so, <laughs> oh, this is good. Yeah, boss is, it was clickbait for the first 30 minutes. <laughs> we started, we started. That's, that's all I'm good for these days is clickbait. <laughs> no substance, <laughs> just clickbait. No, I don't even think I'm very good at clickbait. I try to, I don't think I get too involved in a lot of the drama. So, yeah, that's I'm not good. Really good yeah. on the clickbait. 
Other people yeah. are way better at that than me. That's for sure. So <laughs> we're not naming any names either, but we know who they are. Mm. Um, so thank, first of all, thanks for taking time. Cause I know you got like, this Pleasure, like man. peak busy season Four, for you yeah. with all the stuff that's going on and, and, uh, compliments the, the, and the barbell spin guys told me, make sure you make sure you butter them up before you start asking them tough questions. <laughs> Oh really? Is that <laughs> so? Uh, uh, we, we, the one that I do want to comment this is genuine though. The open was awesome. Well, what I, hold on. What I love yeah. about that, Craig, is like how long have we known each other? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like, like it's almost twenty years that we've yeah twenty. <laughs> yeah, it is. I was getting each other's orbit, orbit and yep. and somebody's got to tell you how to how to interact with me. <laughs> Hilarious. That's that's great. Good good. Point. I was telling I was telling Craig the story about the 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 competition behind the you know with uh san francisco crossfit when we were dragging those grates down the side yeah. of the street with the kettlebells on them and sparks flying. you know all, yeah. all that old school stuff as before you could buy uh sleds for a reasonable that's right yeah. <laughs> 2004 well i told people if they want to kind of know what adrian is like go back to some of the old crossfit san francisco videos and look at the stuff he did the stuff he posted and mm -hmm. It's, we we we, oh, we compared it to the movie Ready Player One, where they try to figure out where the key is, so they go back and watch the archives. <laughs> and so we we try to yeah. figure out what you're gonna. We try to figure out what the Easter egg is for quarterfinals by going back and watching some of that stuff. Well, the, I mean, yeah, age old question: Do you really want to know? I I don't believe that people really want to know. Like, I think it's better to just uh, have them come as they come and then you get to do them like everybody else like do you really want that for like a week ahead of time no yeah. Your head you know what thinking it i mean the way very people good. obsess over these it's you don't oh want to do God. that no well but you know what very good point because it, it, instantly instantly they would like the, you know suppose it's ghc sit-ups like if we say like but the fact that we even talked about ghc sit-ups earlier in this podcast before you came on that i i'm gonna see my athletes out there doing ghc sit-ups you know, probably <laughs> today <laughs> they've, been, they've been doing them. <laughs> they've been doing them. Yeah. The um uh, but the open was for us was it was our best it was best open over ever for Diablo 20 years, which is to me is remarkable because you know I'm at this glad point to I'm like you know I'm, yeah and and best best participation ever. Mm -hmm. Um which of course then leads into the 25%, which has garnered an, an incredible more amount of interest by our community like we've i feel like we brought more of our community further along in the process and kept them more and got them more excited about the games and learning about it you know someone told me this morning they watched you know started watching different podcasts related to it um that's cool and and my coaches are getting private coaching sessions to or my coach again private coaching sessions for the some of the skills like bar muscle mm -hmm. ups yesterday i walked in and, and preparation yeah what, preparation what could for, come what could come um so that's cool do you um but it would, now that you have more people coming into the open, is was that a consideration for you with respect to these workouts versus, say, planning for a top 10 percent versus a top 25 percent? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you have to be, um, I guess, just sensitive to the fact that you got a wider pool and particularly because that pool not only extends 25 percent, but like, you know, it doesn't change until you get to 54. Right. Or 55, I suppose, technically. Yeah. So like oh, at that yeah. top end of the 50 to 54 um, and you have that wider 25% making it in, like, you know, you got to make sure that it's, it's reasonable enough for people. But I'll also say on the other hand, I don't think people give the broader community enough credit in a couple of ways. And number one, it's like, look, if you're in the top 25%, yeah, you're not going to be a world beater. I get it, you know, but I'm in the top 25%, you know what I mean? And I'm not the fittest guy around, but like, I know my way around the CrossFit gym and I'm going to be just fine with even things that are going to be a bit of a reach for me. Like I'll be able to take a crack at it and, and give it uh, my best shot. And I think that that's true for most people in that top 25%. They're not slouches. You know what I mean? They're not noobs. Yeah. They're, not, <laughs> they're not people that are like, what's a barbell. And I think it's really um, unfortunate that so many people have just kind of thrown that aside and been like, Oh, top 25%. It's gotta be a kid glove. It's like, no, it doesn't because that range of athlete they, they know what they're doing even if they're not the most head turning athlete in the gym um, so it's it's too bad yeah, that that seems I, to be I kind think, of thrown I, out. yeah i think that is true for for our athletes and we you know we, the, we look at it and we compare them to the you know the best of the best in the gym they're typically in quarterfinals and granted yeah there are some deficiencies but when you compare them like the rest of the community at diablo mm -hmm. yeah they're always they're always at the top of the sugar board uh sugar wad leaderboard 
all and, and in, in, from my experience most of the people in that top 25 percent, like if you were to write just pick a workout up on the board and say okay i want you to tackle this at open gym you'd have a pretty high level of confidence that they'd know what to do to make that reasonable for their level you know what i mean um as far as how to approach it how to strategize it and how to uh scale it if they even have to you know like i would i would have a pretty high confidence that people in that range are comfortable enough in the crossfit environment that they can handle themselves um and so that's the approach we're taking so yeah it'll be a separator for sure uh but you know we want people with scores on the board and and they'll be able to do that how much thought goes into the logistics side of it this open was one of the things that made the open oh just such a sigh of relief oh, yeah. for affiliate owners and like really <laughs> e much easier to execute yeah. was the no floor plans and mm -hmm. and no traverses those kinds of things yeah it was freaking awesome dude and you give me the low I, we had here. we had heats of 15 <laughs> on the first week i mean oh, that was insane yeah. like i mean it was cool. it was an absolute madhouse yeah, uh but fun, you could though. do it it was great is, yeah. do you do you throw those out the window for the quarterfinals and just go look we've ultimately we've got to get the best athletes we can to semifinals and and well we need to test them we need to test them i mean since we're uh you know a bunch of old guys sitting around talking about about crossfit um i'll give you a little context you know like the floor plans kind of were born out of the COVID era in a lot of ways you know like the first time we really had to think about that in a, a highly scrutinized sense was in the 2020 stage one when we were trying to whittle the field down to the top five that were going to come to aromas and a lot of that competition was you know a, a bit of a scramble because we didn't even know if we could do it we didn't know if it was possible to host an in-person event we didn't know if we could do a qualifier where we flew judges around the world and tried to you know get these people competing from their home environment and so a lot of thought at that time went into how can we make this as even across the board as possible? And then, okay, you come out of COVID a little bit. You still have a lot of people that are still unable to get back to the affiliate in 21. So we had to be sensitive around that. And uh, it's one of those things where I think anytime you get into an administrative mindset, it can start to build on itself until it's no longer necessarily serving a good function anymore. You know, you look at any rule book and it's only going to go one way until somebody stops and says, hold on a second this is bloated to the point that nobody's actually reading it oh. and the utility is starting to lack. And I think that's where we got with the floor plans. We got so deep in it and sure, maybe they were, you know, quote unquote, quote, more bulletproof from a certain perspective, but all the feedback we were hearing was like, man, this is such a pain in the ass to implement that we don't want to, we don't want to play. It's like, well, that's a fundamental problem if that's the case. So yeah, okay, we got to rethink this a little bit. And so we went back and thought, okay, what like what is necessary for people to compete in a fair environment and get them to the next stage? And uh, at the end of the day, the big one that we really want to avoid is just people getting too uh, gung-ho around things that are not safe. I mean, you see this in the old days when guys are trying to set the Fran world record where they would set the barbell up like inches away from the pull-up bar, you know, because yeah, the transitions yeah. is the only way that they could kind of shave off a second or two. And it's like, man, we don't want people feeling like they have to play that game. And that's you know, you know, good. you know, it's interesting is the one, yeah. the one piece of tape that you recommended in the so you did was you, the you did break your own rule in the bar. was the you guys broke your rule is that you there was a tape requirement it was and it was for the five feet well, from wasn't, the park. But that was a I'll push back a little bit it wasn't tape it was you could use anything you could use okay oh, yeah that's that's use, a good yeah, point uh, but yeah. here's what's in, here's what's interesting about that we had an athlete f fly off the pull-up bar fly off the pull-up bar um and he did the scale enough. versions he did jumping he did jumping chest bars and then he was doing then he went into pull-ups and he was doing big big hard kips and he flew up the pull bar and landed like three feet from the pull bar <laughs> and i thought oh if the barbell hadn't <laughs> yeah. oh i've had a buddy i got a buddy that cracked his head open on an open workout yeah, yeah. sent me the video didn't tell me what he was showing me and i was like dad come it because <laughs> yeah. the bar was like right there and his poor judge had moved it back closer oh yeah, it yeah it's scary stuff when you see that but um yeah again you know when you have a couple hundred thousand people that you're running through something you know you got i think eighty six thousand qualifiers it was close to that something like that wow. um you know you want to make sure that people aren't being incentivized to take risky behavior because they think it's going to benefit them one or two seconds uh so 
that was really when we took a step back and thought, all right, what do the floor plans get us? It's like, well, safety in a mass participation event has got to be the call. That's the the bright line is like, okay, is it going to be safe? Then we don't really need a floor plan. If it's going to create, an, uh, like I said, an incentive for somebody to start getting a little risky with their behavior. All right, we're going to, we're going to just add the bare minimum to shut that down. The, um, so that makes sense. And then I'm assuming same considerations for quarterfinals then. You got it. Yep. Yeah. And, and um, the, uh, one I'm question. So, I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to these workouts. Can uh, I tell you why, Craig? Oh, okay, good. Here, here we go. Okay. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is the real, this is the real reason decisions get made. Dave beat me on one of the open workouts and I was, I'm not happy about it. So quarterfinals is where I'm going to get my revenge. I'm going to destroy them in quarters. High level gymnastics. You heard it here first. <laughs> hey, don't pay me in the corner, man. I'm not a one trick pony. Trapeze. Awesome, if there's baby. a trapeze. <laughs> He's done that. Yeah. I know. That's what you think of the man with circus arts. Come on. Tim's, Tim's done his homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The one of the numbers that was released was for like four hundred and thirty five thousand, I think, was the number of people that that registered for the open. One of the things I was curious about, because I, well, I think that's a little up. high for this year. I think it was three forty five. Yeah, yeah, that was like, sorry, that was a few years back. I feel three forty five. Twenty eighteen was the four hundred plus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Uh, apologies. So we fact check. You, so. But of that, what I wanted to know, because I had a, was having a conversation with an affiliate owner last night about you know, the people that made the 25%, and her claim was that she felt like they were um, not as fit as previous generations. I don't know how we got on that subject. But what I wanted to ask you is, do you guys know the numbers for the number of first-time open registrations? versus yes. past registrations as like maybe as a percentage is it has the number grown um as a percentage of like say total registrations we seen um, a lot of you know people. it's interesting the the total number of new people uh was climbing up from like 2020 on and i think this year decreased a little bit it's still a pretty significant percentage um right. I, I don't know that number off the top of my head it's it's less than half for sure but uh it's definitely coming down a little bit and i'm not sure why that is or what the driver is for you know somebody to uh want to sign up for the first time versus the second or third time um but yeah we do have that that number i think at diablo we probably have our numbers we had our best open ever because yeah. we had so many new people signing up for so oh, that's cool for the open this year well let me let me ask you Good guys then was it did they were they encouraged to sign up before they knew the workouts was it like once the first one dropped they were like oh i can do this i want to i want in <laughs> like what was it that attracted those new people in your gym craig um for us it was yeah we started the promotion way sooner this year yeah we started, we started really early we started in december with it this year within the intramural right, cool. too and i think that yeah. even with the open yeah. workout being announced kind of helped but we did that you know why we did that we did that because crossfit started earlier this year yeah you guys put out content really related that's, that's to the open point. sooner and that kind of got me going okay i need that God, the members are already asking me i have members posting about it mm -hmm. that in the veterans were posting about it i'm like okay i need to get on this that's interesting i don't know what but what about you tim uh yeah i mean i think so we we kind of do it in phases like the first phase is like hey the open's coming like you know you should do this it's great get people to try to talk about it a little bit in class uh then it's like okay people start doing it and then you're like okay then i start addressing like hey why would you not like why are you not doing it yeah. right and if it's like oh hey like you know well we our kids are on the ski team and we're not going to be here like okay right or if it's like well i don't know like i'm i'm brand new and i don't know what i'm doing you're like perfect i was like you know because uh and i think even even just the emphasis from uh, HQ on it being accessible. It was like, listen, they want people to do this. It's going to be accessible. It's going to be, and it, and it totally was. And I think that was really good. Uh, I think like the, the challenge and the accessibility, you know, cause you're yeah. going to get the top, the top guys are going to be the top, right? Like yeah, always. Uh, so there was that. And then, uh, then I definitely use things like, Hey, do it for me. Right. Like, you know what? 
like we wanted to get the gym more than last year. Last year we set a record. We were at 75 signups or something like that. So we, we passed that. I said, I want to be on the front page of the, the West region or whatever, North America yeah. West. And so then they're like, Oh, okay, let's do it for Tim. Right. Yeah. Or then if it's like, let's do it for the coaches. And then I'd say like, and you know what? Like let's, I want to get a higher percentage of our membership than Craig. Right. <laughs> and they're like, okay, oh, screw that guy. Yeah. You know, we, we don't even know him, but you know, like if Tim says it, then like, you know, then he must be terrible. So, uh, yeah. you know, so they would do things like that. Um, you know, and so then, and then maybe, yeah, we definitely had some more, like once the workout came out and it's like, Oh, dumbbell snatches and, you know, burpees over that, like sweet. So, um, you know, it was a combination, uh, type of thing. And so then next year, I can tell you, since we finished out registered, we we're at 96. So then it's easy. Like, Hey, we're got to break a hundred. Gotta break a hundred. Yeah. Gotta break a hundred. Yep. You know? So, yeah. uh, and then that would put us just, you know, a rat, you know, much closer to that 50%, you know, of our membership type of thing. So, and in our area, like, I mean, everybody's so busy on weekends, like, mm -hmm. I mean, for, we generally do. And I'll probably tell them like, Hey, if we get over a hundred early, we'll do it on Friday night. You know, like we'll do it Friday afternoon. We'll do a Friday night lights. And we, cause we've never done it like that. We always do it Saturday morning. There was definitely more chatter amongst the affiliate owners. I feel like this year about ideas to, to drive participation and drive community events. How does it, Buzz, let me ask you this question. You get, you know, we have so many more people now in the quarterfinals and the reviews are video reviews. Yep. Or especially for the top athletes. I don't want that job. Um, <laughs> Not a lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually, I shouldn't say that. I, that's dismissive of the people that do <laughs> sign. Like, we do get a lot of people that are really eager to help on that team. And man, yeah. they are some of the most selfless people because it is long hours and a lot of work to resolve that thing. It's a beast. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. I got you off. Yeah. No, that's all right. That's, that was kind of where I was going with this. It's like, do you, you know, so it's a, you have a, you have people that are in house and probably then also remote that are doing it for you and they're spending hours yeah. reviewing it. Do you, do you guys look for the, how do you do it? Is there a process? Like, do you look for the outliers first and then, and then work your way in? Or do you just like say, Hey, look, we're going to review the top 200, that kind of thing. Well, we have a number that we're looking at and the way it basically shakes out is if you're going to make it to semifinals, then we want visibility on your performances. That's the big, the big deal. Um, and so it's kind of tricky at the quarterfinal stage because we really are kind of serving two masters. Like at the top end, we have to have good uh, confidence that we've got the right people moving to semis. Uh, Cause it's just not that many spots, you know, especially if we're talking the individual semifinals, it's like 40 spots is not that many. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that you're as bulletproof as you can there. Um, on the other hand, you don't want somebody who's down the leaderboard to feel like, man, I got to set up all this video equipment. I got to do all these like hoops uh, and jump through a bunch of uh, things to try to get on the leaderboard. It's not worth it for me to play. So we have to kind of balance that. And that's always kind of the, the challenge at this uh, stage. But again, the priority is, okay, if you've got a semifinal hopeful athlete, then yes, we're going to have a lot of visibility on their performances. And then that extends to, okay, let's say Tim, he's not a semifinal hopeful athlete, but he has a home run on workout three and it affects semifinal right. hopefuls. And we're going to look at that too. So those are the, those are kind of the big priorities for us. Do you expect with the workouts that are coming that we'll see specialists affecting the leaderboard? Was it, uh, was yeah, it, I mean, was it's handed. Way it's always kind of possible, it but I feel like this is a pretty CrossFit quarterfinals. Like it is, it's it's very CrossFit. So yeah, you're gonna have to be well rounded to uh to excel. Now that being said, you know people always are gonna have their kind of pet specialties, uh -huh. and they yeah. you know they can make a charge if that lines up nicely for them. But it's uh yeah, it's pretty CrossFit heavy. And do you? With the time constraint, do you, do, how do you think about the the time constraints um, with respect to uh, video requirements and then, of course, affiliate considerations? Yeah, I mean, you it's just, the you same. just try to e even you know d offer diverse time restraints, you know, or time time domains um, with the workouts, and then do you think about like, oh shit, these guys are videotaping this? Holy crap! 
I mean, that, that plays all the way through, right? It's, uh, it's kind of everybody playing the same game in the sense because you have the affiliates that have to conduct it. You have the athletes that have to do the workout and then you have our team that has to review it. And so, you know, if you think about every video, a 20 minute video versus a 30 minute video times how many thousands oh. of videos, like that's a huge number very quickly. So I think it's in everybody's best interest that again, at the quarterfinal stage, it's a separator. It's not, I don't think anybody's going to claim that it's the most robust test of fitness. It can't be. That's just not the nature of this competition. But it needs to be enough of a filter that it can make sure that the top qualifiers deserve to be at that semifinal vying for the game spot. So is it going to have the 45-minute event, uh, you know, where you're just grinding it out? Unlikely at the quarterfinal stage, right? I don't think that's going to be... Uh, <laughs> That's that's something that you, uh, if you have that on your bingo card, you're probably not going to get the same. Thing on, so. <laughs> well, Craig asked a good question uh, before you came on. I think is uh, have we have has HQ shifted over into AI to use for video uh, analysis? Not yet. You know, no, we're not. We're not confident that there's one out there that. Uh, you know, I mean, somebody that's going to catch you know another looper. You know, yes. uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we've had uh, you wouldn't believe something. That was my age group, so that was that was that was my year. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, though, I would uh, love to see a video compilation of some of the greatest stuff hits you guys have oh, seen. Man, like a whole compilation of that just, would blow out great. their faces or something. But yeah, come on, like, I mean no, that would because you know, or you know what? I mean that's the best. Like shame is a powerful motivator. Yeah, I'm right. Like, like you know, put them on blast. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Let's see if we. We get some downtime. Maybe we'll we'll make a, a greatest hits compilation. <laughs> greatest um, misses. Just a piece yeah, of exactly. just a piece of trivia um, on that on Tim's reference to the looper. He was talking about a particular athlete, an age group athlete, Trevor Bachmeyer, um, that looped his done out of, uh, his double under was it double thrusters. under thrusters, double thrusters, under right? thrusters, right? Yeah, and he yep. did that. He did that. Made that video at Diablo CrossFit in Al Alamo. in Alamo at our Alamo location. <laughs> early in the morning when he, he he kept it he wanted key access to the gym we could figure out why he wanted key access to the gym well we figured out why he wanted key access to the gym wait so craig no this clock is, no that, judge what i'm hearing what's that i said so this time. is your fault <laughs> what I'm hearing? God. we tried to put maybe his, believe me we had our doubts early on with with amazing with dr bachmeyer yeah and uh <laughs> yeah, people that. do funny things now you know and also uh, this kind of touching on a theme that i touched on earlier too you know at this time of year there's always going to be scrutiny around video review there's always going to be controversy around it like i don't think you can escape that with uh just you know the mass amount of review that we have to do um but i'll say on the other end too like uh, for the most part it's a high integrity community and and we do trust people to do the right thing and we trust affiliates <laughs> to do the right thing. Um, and we couldn't conduct the competition without that. And I think that it's easy to take pot shots from the cheap seats. Um, and, and Hey man, we're not above reproach. That's fine. But I also think that it really discards a lot of good people doing the right thing. That is by and large, the majority of the comp, uh, the community that does the competition. So, you know, even at, yeah, there are some bad eggs out there. There's no question about it. Um, and we're going to do our best to, to find them and, and do the right thing when we do find them. But hey, man, shout out to the rest of the community for for keeping things a high integrity. Um, that's that's. I would I would way. agree. I totally agree. I mean, I've I've done my I've I don't know. I always felt like, well, you know what? I've gone through the judges course, and maybe I'll go and look at somebody's because I want to. I'll look at a leaderboard. Mm -hmm. One of my things that I do is like I'll go see who's done video submissions. Yeah. Right. Maybe in the open. Right? I'm like, I want to see what this time looks like. Right. So like I can put that in my head of like how I want it, how fast I want to go. What's the transition? Like? What's he doing? You know, like, OK, it's this kind of pace. What's it? What's he rowing? And and so then I'm like, OK, I'm here. I'll you know, it gives me the option. Hey, is this legit workout? Is there a penalty that should be looked at? And uh, but even then, like even if they're like pretty trashy reps or something like that, you're like, dude, this is like you're in and out. We can't see the weights. We can't see whatever. Like it it ge still generally doesn't seem nefarious. You know, it's, it, it doesn't seem intentional. It's more of, uh, you know, 
not even negligence. It's just more of like uh, somewhat incompetence, right? It's just like they're not paying attention. They're just trying to do this thing. They're on their lunch break. Who knows what, right? Like, so uh, get with the, that, get that with, was always my impression. Get with the programming's on board, by the way, with us today. Oh, right on. Yeah, can we Good talk about how? Can we talk about how slick Boz's hair looks right now? <laughs> hey, you know, it's my uh, once a week uh, shower, whether I need it or not. So you guys are lucky. <laughs> what are your recommendations? So based on that, that we got a few more minutes with you here. So what are your recommendations for affiliate owners and for and for judges at affiliates with respect to the quarterfinals? We're past past the open now. Um, yeah, I and, think. Yeah, go ahead. To, to Tim's point, I think the simple steps are the ones that people don't take, especially if they've done competitions in the past. They're like, oh, I've done the Open before. I've done quarterfinals before. They kind of start skipping steps, and then I think that's when you can land in hot water. So one of the simplest things to do is to get that scorecard and print it out and then look at it with the athlete that you're about to judge. Sit yeah. down together and say okay here it is and you know we did a lot of work this year to try to revamp those scorecards and the same reason that we were looking at the uh, floor plans it's like man that you know the, the scorecards in past years had gotten bloated to the point that i don't think people were reading them anymore because they were just so dense and you're like dude do i need to read a novel on how to do the deadlift i get it that every contingency is covered in it but it more often than not makes me just not want to read the thing at all so we went back to the drawing board and we're like, how can we simplify these scorecards, make them more um, at a glance, so to speak, so like you can uptake the information really quickly. Uh, and then you have a clear sense of what's in bounds and what's out of bounds. Um, that, now, it's not going to cover every single specific that could possibly come up, but it's going to give you a really easy access to what is recommended or what's required, rather, for that movement. Um, anyway, I'm rambling, but point being, print out the scorecard if you're a judge, sit down with the athlete ahead of time. Take the five minutes to just go through it together so that there's no surprises on either end. And then have a couple reps where you're like, all right, is this going to pass muster or not? Do that before the clock starts. Do that before you're under the gun. That goes so far to just smooth things out because I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that where it's like, okay, the judge is like, you ready? Athlete's like, yep, I'm ready. There's been no communication ahead of time. Oh. They start ripping and 10 reps deep. It's just like no rep city. Yeah. It's like, dude, you could have avoided that with, with 30 seconds of communication ahead of time. So you can show me a big rep. one. For show me a rep. Let me see what you're doing. Alison yeah. Pacelli last year, I remember her judging yeah. athletes and she used nine times games that games athlete. And she would just, I remember her telling me, she was like, they aren't reading the, the oh, scorecards. Yeah. They yeah, aren't yeah. reading. The, she would be so up there, you know, Especially years of doing this. Plans. Her yeah. coach, her husband, Akeem would just go through in the, minute details sure. of scorecards before because you don't want to you don't have to get halfway th through or get it done and realize you fucked right. it up well this i think i definitely noticed the difference what you said about the scorecards and how you guys kind of simplified it it's it's definitely more of a at a glance versus like well let's mm -hmm. read the full finer detail of everything yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what was a big driver of that too was um you know like we got to respect the fact that we have so many people around the world doing this now Oh, yeah. And we, at this point, we just have not translated into every oh, wow. language. That's you know cool. what I mean? Like there, there are some that, that get translated. There's some people that take it upon themselves to do that locally, which is awesome that, that people do do that. But the fact of the matter is like, we're behind on that. You know what I mean? And so to have more of a visual reference, that's more universal. I think that's pretty big when we're talking a global competition as well. The, you know, for anybody that goes, well, how could you possibly not translate it into the CrossFit's in 150 countries? How could you possibly not translate it into all these different languages? I just want everybody to know because everybody bitches about CrossFit and how much money they make. They have 150 employees and they're in 150 countries. And those 150, the and those 150 people don't speak 150 different languages. Need to get you some of that AI. Do some translate. <laughs> Tim's, you, uh, can you Tim, Tim's gym is like in the heart of like you know, <laughs> venture capital world and tech. tech world. Like it's, it's just AI. What's, that's what's the problem? I don't get it. AI. Solution. The answer is AI. Both plans were set up for clearly like more strategic, like easy to uh, set a line and yeah. use it as yep. a baseline. Well, well, hey, but, fellas, I hate to cut it short. I got to run here. I'm actually yeah. heading down to um, local affiliate here, CrossFit Trivium. And we're going to do an Instagram live release of the team workouts coming up here. So oh, I got to, yeah, yeah I got to hop on. Yep, head down there. So, awesome. yeah, if you guys are uh, 
on a team, stay tuned. Check out the CrossFit Games Instagram page. Uh, we'll be going live in about 45 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, team workouts are coming out today. Should be a good time. Right thank you guys for having me. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, thank, thank you, my you friend. Coming. Thanks, Boz. Let's do it again sometime. I'll see you guys. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, we'll, we'll stay on for a few more minutes and we can uh, stay on before they announce it and he yeah. goes live. And, and right now, I, I, I just I feel like the I feel like Barbell Spin right now is like shaking his head at me. Asking the tough questions, and, and he did say he'd come back. I, I'm, he said not. next time. Yeah, see, he said he would come back. It was planting see? the seed. We're yeah. Planting the seed. We're gonna water it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what Boz was talking about. So what? Oh, Don't squat on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was the uh, this was the support shirt from 2018, oh. and he saw our, he saw the like our our people walking around with it. He's like, I gotta get one of those. And so then he bought one. Like he, we emailed and he bought one. The um, I took away from this the um, do you hear him say? Because I asked him about specialists. Mm -hmm. So if there's a if a clue you want from this, <laughs> it was play it back where he talks about no, these are very CrossFit workouts. Yeah, cut the clip, J Jamie Lee. Put it on the put it on the gram. Loop it. Yeah. Oh, we oh we will. Oh, we will. <laughs> Boz reveal Boz reveals workouts on clues. Yeah, no, no, not clues. Quarterfinal clues. Dude, this is click. You don't know how to write clickbait. Boz tells us. Boz reveals the quarterfinal workouts on. Accidentally reveals quarterfinal workouts on PRs all day podcast. <laughs> that's what it's good. That's what it's going to be. And then there's the clickbait. Yeah, and then Hiller will latch on to it. Disastrous quarterfinal workouts coming. <laughs> 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 but, oh, or the better one will be like true you know, crossfit you know yeah <laughs> no it'll be you know crossfit doesn't have the capacity to review all videos <laughs> some losers like just need some ai <laughs> just needs, you know it ai ai i think is a possible solution i think in probably in the next couple of years yeah. And in the next couple of years, so we, you know, look, if you, if everybody's kind of facing the same way, but you can, you can train it to look for certain things. Yeah. It really is remarkable what it can I mean, do. It could probably at least simplify a little bit yeah. of it, but I, I did anyway. So going back to that, I do like that. Um, and I, I think the takeaway for affiliates on this is man, seriously, have your judges review those scorecards, really look through them and understand them. You know, when we saw it, after the open, every open workout, Yvonne goes through all the scorecards and like, she looks and all of the, you know, there's probably, the little details, dude. Probably ten percent, maybe fifteen percent of the, them had errors in the, just adding up the scores, or even missing. Them. Oh my numbers. gosh! Yeah. 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 No, no, the numbers were there, yeah, or yeah. the tie break times, tie break times, yeah, and all of that stuff. So have your judges, have your best judges, be the judges, by the way, and then and then make sure you review the scorecards with the athletes, and yeah. then make sure your cameras have battery charges, all of that shit, because otherwise it's just airplane mode. Otherwise it's a disaster. And I mean, te teams are this week, so that's kind of yeah but if you're okay. doing individuals then you definitely have time to rehearse and or practice. just accept that you're not going to make it and just don't worry about the video oh, here's it. that guy, that guy. <laughs> exactly that guy <laughs> you're the eighty thousand people and you know play the game you're the one play the game so you're, you're saying game. there's a chance <laughs> <laughs> you know it's <laughs> You did put speechless. Yeah. Hey, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I play the game. I tell people, I was like, hey, I play the game until they tell me to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what that's what you sign up for. You I sign up, you're saying, I'm gonna play the game. You know what's really cool is like is in this one I actually told me it made it made me very happy. Alessandra Pacelli did the open this year and she's five months pregnant. Um I think six months I was now. Just, I think she's six, six months, months pregnant. She did the open and she was and she she was quali gonna qualify for the twenty five percent. Like she she yeah. she kind of killed it. Yeah, which is not surprising. Right? Yeah, when shocker. We see, see what Tia did last year, and and so but but the last workout, she marked. This is Alessandra, by the way. She marked the last workout scaled because no, she did not. Yes, yeah, she did. And so so she didn't qualify for quarterfinals because she said her and uh, on reading the the description in the movement standards, her thighs had to touch the ground on the burpees. Oh, and because oh. of her belly, she would kind of go to like a partial knee oh, down just so that she didn't okay. bring, you know, and that was, was something that 
uh, Annie Thor's daughter talked about. And Annie Thor's daughter posted a video where they made a yeah, they had the little <laughs> pads, pads and they had a hole the, where she baby belly. Yeah, yeah. And so Sandra didn't. She just went kind of down to her knees. And then I Jackson asked her. He goes, "Why didn't you mark that? Why didn't you just mark it RX? You she mark, read the rules. She, she is like, <laughs> oh man, she's just so. That's awesome. But she did it, and she she did the open, and I told her I was proud of her. Just like doing the open, like for an for an athlete, like Alessandra is like nine times games. Like she has an expectation on herself that she wants to perform her absolute best and be part of the best every time. So for her to like have to scale a workout, that was a huge growing moment. Well, she for also her. she also like, wants it's to, hard for her, but she also talks a lot about just how everybody else should be following the rules as well, is. All and the here's time. a perfect example. All the time. an example. That's right yeah and it's um so it's kind of cool to see yeah. um i would really love that was the other thing i took away from this i would really love uh, to see some sort of compilation video from crossfit <laughs> of the kooky stuff that they've had to review i remember in the age groups two about three no three four years ago in the age groups an age group guy that was doing it submitted his video and then it went around and that someone posted in the master one of the masters uh, was it the Facebook one when he was kind of walking off screen yeah he, he would, would stop yes, the time he would yes. stop the camera that was the best is he it was would, all of his videos he too doing, he would do he would do the workout he's like he's going along okay and then when he got tired he'd walk over and turn stop to pause the clock this is on the video stop yeah. the clock and then he'd go into the into his house into the garage yep come back out and, and no longer breathing heavy yeah no longer breathing. <laughs> restart the clock and start and finish the work and then submit the score that was on the clock Oh, that was. Hey, remember the first, uh, or not the first, but one of the years, it might have been 16 or something like that. I think it was 2016. Wasn't 2016 one of the workouts, Amanda, or 2015, one of those? And um, there was no time cap listed. And the woman took yes. like over 24 hours, Yvonne was very kept the clock Yvonne. going, and that worked her way through those muscle ups and got a score, got a time. And because she was able to complete it, RX, that she went to the games. That's right. That was a that was a quarterfinal. Uh, and that was the year that Yvonne. But that's was. reading the she read it. So you yeah. see, I blame HQ on that one because well, they're not. The, I didn't the, ask Boz, but like you know, who are you giving these score sheets to gym owners to say how would you cheat on this, or how are people going to cheat? Yeah, that's a good question. Just play devil's advocate. Well, yeah, because they because they will. They'll figure that's it a out. Good point. They'll figure way. Oh, they'll it. figure it out. They'll Yvonne, figure it out. Yvonne was so upset about that because she did email yeah. CrossFit and say, "Hey, can I come back and finish that work? I just submit my time is twenty four hours." And they told her no. Yeah. And then some woman did and got through, and Yvonne couldn't. She she had to you know whatever she got capped at, and then she and, and it kept her kept her out of the games. That was like, yeah. you're right. She was so upset. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure it was fun living in that house for a while. By the way, for for anyone that wants it, oh yeah. <laughs> so by the way, related to that though, um, uh, the Trevor Bachmeyer story that is a true story. He did loop his video, came in, and he did. And how they caught him? He submitted that video stop because he didn't have a judge. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, yeah, he well, he yeah. Did that's he? right. Not no, on camera. No, no, he, he no, because he was using his. Wife there was no to clock. Judge. That was his. That was no, no. That on that one. Uh, oh, that's right. He was using his wife as his judge, he, and CrossFit yeah. got that video because there was another video that they looked at. Well, they requested his video. They requested all of his videos yeah. because of the one that they requested. Where yeah. There was some weirdness. Going and so that one, you could see him looking down and going to the same spot, and the, there was a little yeah. hitch in the in the video, and you could do it, and it was really grainy. Yeah, purposely he, used. He group. missed picking up the jump rope every yeah. ten rounds. Yeah. And, and every single thing, uh, it was like perfect. But then you watch the last round and he yeah. fell apart. Yeah. I mean, it looked like, okay, now this is someone that's done the workout, someone that's he, tired. He but sold hard there. The first nine rounds looked amazing. The 10th round or whatever it was, so, you know, it was like, um, you know, looked he, like somebody that had done, you know, so however would, many, you know, double his hundred. scores on the open. So he, he also said he was good friends with Dave Castro. Yep. And that he got good seats at the games because of Dave Castro yep. um, from his military experience, which Dave confirmed he had no idea who he was. And then the other part that was interesting was he would show his videos to our coaches. 
And I remember Kyle Zaziah telling me, God, man, he, he smashed me. He goes, I don't understand. This guy's a master's athlete. And Kyle Zaziah is, you know, our younger potential games athlete, team athlete. He's been mm-hmm. to been to the games on a, yeah, on a on the on team. team. And he's like, God, he beat me on that death of workout. And he goes, and I, I go, did you see a video of him? He goes, well, I just saw, he just showed me like one round. And he goes, and it was so fast. I'm like, okay. And so I asked Trevor, before this whole controversy came out, I sat down, I went to lunch with him, specifically went to lunch with him. Because his scores, remember in the open, they contributed were, they were really contributing to, yeah, but they're contributed to our team performance. He yeah. qualified, he qualified for regionals and he then no shit. Yeah, and no shit. But he helped our team. His scores were going. So those, so I went and met with him and said, Hey, do you have videos of your performances? And he said, well, I do. I have them on iPad. I go, you know, you, you need to record these things because CrossFit's going to ask for it. He goes, yeah. He goes, but I, you know, my iPad got stolen when I was in Hawaii. And I'm like, okay. I go, because of that, if you don't have it, I can't. I have to take you off Diablo. Yeah, off the um, team. Off the team. I remember that. Because you, you can use your whole gym as a team. I go, I got to remove you from the team of Diablo because your scores are contributing and I'm going to, you know, we're going to need to validate it. Thank God I did that. Like, yeah. just like that, that would have just been a disaster. I, I, I remember, I mean, the, the and not to pick on him, like, I wanted to, I wanted to compete against him. Talking. Yeah. I wanted to compete against him. I wanted to see how fast, like, because that we're in the same age group, same age. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, let's do this. You know, like, I can't remember what it was. It might have been even uh, when Lelaine hosted a throwdown, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was texting him on Twitter or something. I was like, Show I was up. like, come on, come on, let's do this. You know, like let's let's push each other. Let's see what's what. He didn't, he didn't. He was like, Oh yeah, sounds good. He qualified for and then it never never showed up. So no one ever saw him work out. Yeah. So he qualified for regionals a year prior to the year of the looping. And I remember he he said he he was like, Oh, I blew my shoulder up. I can't, I can't compete. It was like right last minute after the submission or the um, invitations went out. That's right. He, um, now I talked to, um, look at us giving this yeah, education on the OG elite, stuff. Talking, talking elite fitness. So I talked to the talking to Sean Woodland and Sean Woodland said, told me that that video of the looping video was not the only one that they had issues with. There was a, really? there, in that workout, there was, there was a workout where you had to do two twenty five. S- snatches yep. or yeah. snatch yeah oh yeah because they said there was something about the weights that yeah was he goes off. he goes there's that was the chest to bar snatch workout wasn't yeah and it? he said he goes man there's something about his weights and it's he's the, he was moving the weight and they thought it was hollowed out yeah because the barbell was you know how you know you lighter weight and it, you, even though it, it's got big plates on it you can tell They're movie props heavy. yeah and they said his weights look like it was hollowed out weights. Mm. Which it, like, I want that video. Right. I want to see that video. That would have been a good That's one to go out, so out to the energy. He was he was bad news. And I'm glad I kind of caught him internally at Diablo and we we pushed him out of the gym and said, look, this isn't gonna fly at our gym. And then he got busted and it was so embarrassing. And fortunately, one thing he didn't do is he didn't do that workout, that loop video workout in front of our logo. Remember, yeah, he, yeah. remember he did it in the yoga room? He did no. He did it in the back room. And yeah. It had the, the the high wall. It was like there. narrow. It looked like a garage for kind yeah. of. Oh, the Diablo A. Yeah, it was yeah. in the Alamo back room yeah. where all those well, you had wall, it, wall shots around. You, that you would have to know it. You would have to know yeah, that it, was, it wasn't the D. It was the A. Yeah, yeah. So it was the whole thing was like epic CrossFit cheating moment, and here was Diablo CrossFit was like right in the center of it. I was just yeah. mortified. The irony is, he's an amazing chiropractor. Well, hang on a second. He he's worked on a, us for a few years. Hang on a second. That's not true. He's he's an Im- impressive body work guy. Yes. He lost his chiropractor license <laughs> um, years ago because oh, really? yeah, because of uh, the the fake uh, X rays. I remember one member, oh, I did our member, that. Brian, Brian, I Brian won't mind, Brian George. Brian George had went in there for treatment and he showed him a video. He said, look, so he, showed, he showed him x-ray and he says, hey, man, you're back. He goes, look, man, this is this. You're going to need adjustments. We want to set you up for regular appointments. This is, you know, look, at, look at this, this picture, this x-ray. And so Brian takes it home and shows his wife and his wife looks at it and says, well, what's that metal circle there right in front of your you know, at the lower what portion. And she goes, he says, well, it's a button on my pants. And she goes, do you have a metal button on your pants? I don't, you don't have any b- pants with a metal button. And he's like, oh, 
and he realized that the button on his pants was not a metal button. He didn't have, he didn't have a button. On, he didn't have a metal button on his pants. He's like, it wasn't him. Oh shit! It wasn't his X-rays. So, so he got found guilty of of using other X-ray X-rays. The, the whole thing is just a debacle. sketch. Just sketch. Yeah. Wow. And it led into fake. A looping video. I wonder how many other people. I mean, I'm sure it's not the. If there's one, there's more. Yeah, there's. You know, more. like I mean, not to just. I mean, not the that boss, it doesn't deserve it, but it's like. But at the same heads. time, like I wonder how many mm -hmm. are like you know, like you said. Uh, I mean, Hiller's gone after some guy that looks like he's got fake weights, right? Like, uh, like one yeah. of the Masters dudes that's like you know beating Rich Froning. You know, and you're like, that's Come what on. I appreciate. I do appreciate that about Hiller. That's the part I appreciate. Like, someone's got to call that stuff out. And I think yeah. Jamie's right too with the shame. Like, there's got to be a little bit of shame in that. Well, but, but there is a number. Boz said that he goes, Look, when you get, you know, 300,000 people doing something, you're going to have a, <laughs> you're going to have some weird shit. Just because on. you do CrossFit doesn't mean, doesn't make you a moral or ethical person. It does filter out assholes. I mean, it can. They blast people that get, but not completely. People. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's going to be a few, right? There's going to be a few. They're going to get through the cracks. I want that video. Yeah. I want, I want to see that compilation video of some of the craziest stuff they've seen. I'm going to, I'm going to work on them. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Any, anything else you guys wanted to, Oh, by the way, Tim, what did you think about, um, um, our, a planned expansion at Diablo into our <laughs> dude, our, dude, you got me. Yes, got me good. that is yeah. so awesome. <laughs> I told you, like, if you can, you, you, if you have someone to run it, that's, I mean, that's my thing is like, dude, even with any program here at the gym, you know, like whether it's teens, kids, legends, you know, I'm like, man, yeah. I'm with it, you know, but, but you just got to make the numbers work, right? We were joking around talking yeah. about that and. You know, so going to get into our Zoltan, shipping Zoltan, business. Zoltan Heights is a former tennis pro, and he owns CrossFit Pleasanton, where they hosted 24.1. And he said that he's been trying to find a space, but the challenge is finding a space that's big enough to accommodate enough, enough courts to be able to generate the revenue. And at $2 a square foot, 20,000 square feet, you need to get to do 15 courts. It's really easy math. So 20,000 square feet will get you almost 15 courts. Because you have to have walkways and passwords, but get this. 20,000 square feet is probably about $50,000 in expenses, rent and all the other mm. stuff to cover it. $50,000 a month in just your rent and expenses. And you got, now you got 15 courts. Now you got to do the math. Okay. How can I, out of 15 courts, can I get how many players does that support? That? Yes. How many players? How long is the game? How many players? How many members do you have? How do you do drop-ins? How do you do like, okay, leagues? You know, I said like, you know, the thing that you'd be able to do is like, if you get it, you know, you're in an industrial area or whatever, and you get your zoning, right? And you put it in your application, like, hey, we're going to run until midnight, one o'clock, you know, like these, these hockey rinks, that's what they do. You know, they've got, I mean, they are, there is somebody on that ice yeah, nonstop. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, my and my my takeaway from this at the all in like capital investment to build the courts and facilities and everything else probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars like two hundred fifty thousand dollars to have a reasonable you know a, a pickleball court where you could charge the kind of money you need in order to make this thing profitable. But I'm gonna my my point being to CrossFit affiliate owners if you're thinking about doing something like this, go learn go play pickleball and learn the ins and outs for a year. You know the, one of the my the, any go of the talk to JT. I, any things that I have done, yeah, that's Jeremy Teal down at CrossFit Central, but anything that I have done in CrossFit um, or in this business or any business I've done where I didn't know it inside and out, I've that's where I've lost money. I think back to grid. I knew we knew nothing about starting a professional sport. Yeah. We knew about the, the you know kind of you know competitive athletics, but we didn't know anything about starting a professional sport. And millions of dollars were lost because of our lack of knowledge of 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 a professional sport and the same thing with with a pickleball venture like i don't know the ins and outs i don't know the how long do people play how long do they stay yeah. how much are they willing to pay how much does all the equipment cost them are they willing to spend more per month and you know i do know but i think i think your i think your uh biggest factor was the funniest <laughs> what, what's that the the angry old people that 
are <laughs> are pissed off and writing bad Yelp reviews because they couldn't get a game at 9 a.m. on a Saturday. Yes. Just grumpies. Just that's grumps. What he, that's what Yvonne and I were talking about. Was just we, a we bunch have, of grumps. We do. Being 60, we have experience with older people. <laughs> and all I can think of is the complaints about our pickleball gym on next door. <laughs> well, they wouldn't give me, they kicked, made me leave exactly after two hours. And we were like two points away from finishing our tournament game. <laughs> Could you imagine if you had 15 courts? That'd be like, it'd sound like a machine gun in there. Oh, right. Oh. You know, and they're like a paintball guns firing off. You, yeah, you'd be like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you, you better. That be thing is a firing range or something like that. You're like, right. you guys are like airsoft war. You better be yeah, laser tag. You better love pickleball. If you're gonna start oh pickleball gosh. business, you better love pickleball. Have you seen those? Have you seen those like pickleball like centers that now though yeah. that like you see them online that they're just like yeah. they're insane. They're huge, but those are the ones, and that's where it's it's interesting. I mean, just from a business playing the game kind of idea, right? It's it's the same as like you know, Chris Cooper says like, oh, you only need 150 members to make whatever. I'm like, right. well, it depends on where you live uh, and right. what you're charging, you know, kind of thing. But um, at what point, right? Like, yeah, more members, but then it takes more coaches to handle that. It takes more classes. It takes more whatever. Then you're dealing with like even things like more toilet paper, more paper towels, more barbells, more, you know, like all that kind of stuff, you know, to, to make the jump from our gym to you guys, which is literally two times the size, uh, you know, like what is that, you know, is that really worth it? You know what I mean? Like, is there enough margin mm -hmm. Yeah. To say, like, you know what I mean? And the same thing with these pickleball yeah, things. One of the do you need five courts or do you need 20 courts? You well, know, here's the, right. Here's the, here's the thing on pickleball, too, that, that I think a lot of people don't take into consideration. One, you got to have a lot of people. So there's four people per court, right? In the in the neighborhood I am, because they're converting tennis courts everywhere, according mm. to Zoltan, into pickleball ball oh, really? courts. But there's, but there's so many people playing it now, there's no place to park. So in our neighborhood now they're starting to park on the residential streets. Yeah. And now the, now there's this big battle that uh, the signs come out where the neighborhoods are, permits and, only. Yeah, 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 permits only or the you know no pickleball parking is yeah. the ones that they have. And so you, you, and same thing with scaling your cost of business. Yeah, you want to scroll, you want to go from 200 to 400 customers. Okay, well now your traffic's going to double. Do you have parking for? Yeah. And now you've created a, sh a crappier experience for the people that are coming. Like mm -hmm. they can't even find a place to park, or they got to park further away. When they love parking in clothes yeah. and pickleball's the same way. All these old sons of bitches, and I can say that because I'm old. They want to park like right next to that court. Like they don't want to park around the corner in the park. Cause they're going to be running around for a couple hours. You know, you better make sure that you can like, you warm up walking running around. Time. You mean three steps to the left and three steps. right? Hey, they're going to blow a calf out, bro. You know how many people in our gym have blown calves out from pickleball. <laughs> Tell me y'all don't have people limping in there going or sending you a text message. Oh man, I can't do the run today. Blew my knee up, blew my ankle out, blew my, calf up you know like oh I, the number of elbow injuries yes yeah. right I got, I got my tennis like but there. crossfit's dangerous y'all watch out you know like oh my gosh <laughs> i mean it, that's the thing crossfit should totally promote pickleball because it takes all the heat off of like crossfit injuries <laughs> like because pickleball is like the therapist best friend nowadays right well the, oh people my that, gosh. the reason is because anybody can play pickleball yeah and then once they get into it, they start having to move and they've never done those movements ever. Yeah. And it's kind of like the almost like a play on, you know, how like anybody can do CrossFit. Everybody should do CrossFit. And it's kind of like, okay, anybody can play pickleball, but not everybody should do good. pickleball. <laughs> really good point. Yeah. Go to a you know, come to CrossFit gym first. Spend more, spend more time, spend some time at CrossFit gym and you'll, it'll make you a better pickleballer. Yeah. hundred percent. But we're, I know, I, I won't, I've, I've sworn off, actually, Yvonne has sworn off me chasing any wild investment. I, like, it's appealing. Like, I see the numbers. I'm like, oh, and all the people, you, you, you will not believe the messages that I, I you, maybe you would believe all the messages I got, all the, like, this is awesome. Can't believe you're doing it. Direct messages. Oh, I fell for it. Let's see, uh, let's see the screenshots yeah, of those. You should make a compilation of those screenshots. I know. <laughs> suckers. And just and just label it in your story. Suckers. I gotta, I gotta ask this guy. Dan. It's called a joke, y'all. Look it up. 
you got, you got da- I got to ask my old member, Dan, who, who sent me his wife's kind of resume um, and said that she and her partner are top pickleballers. They were D1 tennis players, and now they're pickleball coaches, and they want to help me with this venture. That's how you should totally do it. Let them do it. Let do it. Dude, big, long di- direct message. Big, long direct message. Let him and do then, it. Then long pause because I didn't respond right away. And he wrote, or did oh. I just get April fooled? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. I felt bad for him. Like, you can't take that message back. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Then, then I got a That's call. A lot of time and effort Dude, went I, into that message. I got See, those call. pickleballers are serious, bro. I, I got I got a call from uh, Zoltan. I'm going to throw him under the bus. I got a call from Zoltan at CrossFit Did Pleasanton. Fall for it too? Well, so he called me and I didn't think he was. I was like, but he started talking about it. He goes, dude. I go, what? He goes, you know, I've been looking into that. Um, and I go, no, really? And, but so I still thought he knew that. He I could put it in his it. gym, man. Come on. Well, well, no. And he goes, and he said, he goes, I've been looking for space, man. To hit, but by the numbers in the tennis courts that are converting, he hit all the stuff. Like you got to have tournaments, yeah. got to have leagues in order to cover the nut. But, 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 along. And we went, we talked for 15 minutes. And at the end of 15 minutes, there's a little pause. He goes, was this an April Fool's joke? <laughs> and I'm like, I thought you knew that at the beginning of this call. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. And I go, yes, uh, it was. And then he's like, oh, God. That's so God. good. So <laughs> good. No no lie. He was breaking Well, the down. graphics, bro. You had the graphics down. Like, you had it. It was good. That was a good one. That is definitely I one for the ages. Too. It, that is well, one for the ages. Just as so affiliate owners know or anybody else knows that how this came about. Well, my idea to do it was based upon Alico. Yeah. Alico does wonderful, wonderful April Fools, and they have a yeah. little bit of basis in reality. Yeah. So it's like that's really plausible. This can't be an April Fools. And so I figured pickleball was one where people might think, Oh yeah, shit. They well, we kind of joked about that space the over ball, there. Show the ball, show the logo again, dude. The ball, show the logo again. It's so good. <laughs> dude, look at that. That is beautiful. That is so good. That is so good. Seriously. Told, Yvonne and I, you know, it was funny is the night before. So you should just, trademark it. Get the get the website, get the domain, yeah. get the domain. I was just I was just going to put the logo. Just out hold there. on to it. I was just going to put the logo out there, but I decided, you know what? It needs to have a picture of a pickleball court. So, oh, I, sure. so I did a Google oh, it's search. so good. I did a Google search. But then I also did a Google search for pickleball logos. And all I did was just <sighs> clip that little, that little, little ball the thing. Pickleball, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, oh, that'll go perfect. Dude. I, <laughs> I'm serious. That was awesome. Nailed it. I did it on, on Sunday night. And Yvonne and I were watching TV and I got up and I left the room at like, I don't know, 9 30, 10 o'clock. And I went left the room and she goes, Whoop. and then I come back in and like 45 minutes later, she goes, what are you doing? I go, nothing. <laughs> she goes, what I go, I have to work to do on the computer. And she goes, what work on the computer? I'm like, oh, I go, just some stuff. Related Answer to some the- emails. Thank <laughs> it. <laughs> it was, I told her, I lied. I said, it was related to the podcast. Or the, you know, and I just had to send out, you know, make sure I said, and she goes, oh, okay. And, it's so and it good. Was, what I was working on was the pickleball thing. Oh, dude, it's so good. It's so good. Seriously, you should buy the domain. Just hold on to it oh, until yeah, you figure it out. I mean, like, if Zoltan's watching, like, bro, half your gym. Like, you could get what? Like, four to six courts in there? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's basically what JT did. He just converted yeah. half his gym into pickleball courts. And then he yeah, put them outside, too. Yeah, they put them outside. I don't, but I mean, I, like indoors, right? yeah, he, dude, indoor way. pickleball courts at Zoltan's. Come on, yeah. Put your put your CrossFit on one side. You don't need both sides. Yeah, but you, he, again, in that space, he can only get because he's got the vertical beams. He can only get like maybe three courts in. Like, you can yeah. you can have, you can have that. No, he, no. He, he went and looked at a space that was sixty four thousand square feet wide open space down there in Dublin. He goes, he goes, now that would be ideal. Right? 64,000 square feet. You could probably have like 40 courts, something like that. That's oh crazy. 30, 40 courts. Now, now you're, now so you're there that much demand though. That's the thing. Do you, yeah. do they, do they want well, that? God, dude, based upon the freaking DMS, I got apparently that they, 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 people said the hardest part about playing pickleball is getting reservations on courts. Seriously. Yeah. There's not enough courts anywhere. We, Holy we, shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, Carrie Warner said that she goes, it's like, it's, it's a struggle getting court times. But I don't know how long that's gonna last. But anyway, so sixty-four thousand square feet. He goes, here's the rub. I could convert the front, the front of my parking lot. And so, oh yeah, you could. So, so, so we got good weather. So the so the convert so the the rent rate on that was two dollars and twenty cents a square foot for for warehouse space. Yeah, you're, you're, basically your rent would be one hundred and fifty grand a month. Oh my gosh. Rent. 
that's a lot of pickleball players. That's, that's why I say it's like you got to find that the right, you know, intersection of size, space, usage, uh, destination, bring maintenance. Well, and you can look up look up those those fancy ones that are like bringing like you know locker rooms and pro shops and uh, all the different things. Those are, those are in Texas or Kansas or places where they have yeah, wide open space. spaces and they have those big you know you can build those big metal buildings with yeah. with no beams in the middle. Those that's yeah. that's that's the difference. And here in these um, highly populated areas, all the warehouse spaces and this is a crisis for CrossFit X. I think in the next five to ten years. All of those warehouse spaces and light industrial areas are getting swallowed up by next day delivery. Yeah, say what they call same day Storage. delivery. So Amazon wants Amazon wants the five thousand to ten thousand square foot buildings because they can yeah. put all the stuff that they deliver same day. Yeah, all and the they, stuff that uh, people stole from Walgreens. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Walgreens and Target. Did you see that story about the woman in Pleasant in the, in down in Southern California? There's a w man and wife with three kids, suburban, you know, mom and pop. They were orchestrating the shoplifting gangs to, to provide them stuff to sell on Amazon. And she would literally like kind of order up, hey, you need to go get, you know, you need to go to Walgreens and gang gang rob the Walgreens or we the, need some or, audit insurgent or Kohl's. Like they were so but so when those when those big groups of people go in and, and yeah. get those bags of stuff, they sell that stuff by the bag. So they sell, you know, twenty five bucks a green a garbage bag full of stuff, fifty bucks worth, you know. And so, and then the Amazon retailers are selling it, you know, like if you want just one lipstick, you don't want like a pack of four, you know, you can get that one lipstick sent same day. And, and that's, that's a big business. Like they had a whole operation. They, they showed wow. their house, three kids. They showed their house and their house had like racks of stuff and shelves. Like it was all organized and they're doing all Amazon stuff, Amazon reselling. Insane. That's wild. Incredibly creative. But maybe then I always get into like, God, you can spend that much energy and that much time on that kind of stuff. Why don't you just do something like, legit? Why don't you actually get a job or start a business? Let's do something legit. Yeah, pay taxes then, dude. Well, Come on. Well, good point. I'm going to talk about the seamless uh, bars and quarterfinals to pickleball. Seamless talk there, Corey. At, uh, you know, let, let, get a couple of owners talking about, oh, yeah, tax season. <laughs> 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 White yeah all right guys listen that's why i should put it i'm gonna I, I should like you know just i should just paint that that could be a good there's a good prank if i just paint pickleball court in my front parking lot <laughs> see what happens one of my coaches uh, sidewalk of course one of my coaches for the weekends we we'll do one of one of my coaches already sent me a link that to uh, like so we can set up pickleball courts in the gym on the floors we have and then there's these little markers you can buy and they just like they, you just you lay them down and then when you're not playing you roll them away so it's, it's oh yeah yeah kind of do like it. a little grid grid, uh, grid thing have a tournament yeah <gasps> crossfit tournament coincide like same that, athletes I could see could be a partner pickleball. no the partner I, competition I could, that has I could, I one could, event as a as a pickleball yeah just like same you know because i put it you know why because i put it in the same category as cornhole yeah pickleball and cornhole like it, it's the same thing yeah i i could actually see that like in an intergym competition or, craig it's a floater yeah since floater. we're since we're og and i'm gonna i'm gonna honor him freddie camacho fish game tournament Oh yeah. So you could have CrossFitters and do your indoor pickleball courts, do a tournament. It's just a party. It's just an excuse to party. Yeah. How many pickleball courts could you get in your space? That's what I would wonder. I bet you could get what? Two? Oh, At least. Two. Three? Yeah. Uh, you got one across the front we, there. We, you got we, two on the sides as you go towards the weight room. Hey, we could do probably four courts. Put another one in the weight room. Put another one in the other room. You got, what's that, five? You got five courts, bro. Yeah. Four people each. That's 20 oh, at a time. Level, though. Yeah. Um, Not all the rooms are made. Yes. 20, yes. 20 competitors, and you got like, you know, you have yeah, a limited, limited to 100. Don't, don't, don't hold your breath on that. Like, that ain't coming 50 out. couples, 50 mixed couples. Maybe you could do it for Valentine's Day next year. <laughs> yeah. Disc golf coming up next. <laughs>
All right, guys, listen, uh, we have we have run the gamut of conversation here, and anything else we start to talk about is will likely offend somebody. So we'll we uh, <laughs> team workouts are announced. Yeah, oh yeah, they're gonna announce the team workouts at noon. Dial in for that. Thank you everyone for being with us today. It was awesome. Enjoyed the session. Tim, thank you too. You're okay. Thanks, guys. All right, see ya. Till next time.